What's up, everybody? This is Nick. And this is Eric. And as always, we want to welcome you to the Pull Up a Chair podcast. This this is the one where we talk about, oftentimes, Eric, we talk about many different subjects. We talk about news. We talk about, you know, <laughs> movies. We talk about video games. Last week, we talked about Castlevania. It, it would be a show a, on Netflix. It would be a boring show if we talked about one thing every week. We, like, the same thing. We talked about, you know, ne- we talk about nostalgia things. That's, that is what we do. And today, Eric, we have a podcast on the side because today we chose to talk about Princess Bride. Oh, you're going with the kind of like... A- I'm rhyming, my friend. You can name me Dr. Seuss if you like. Dictionary. When you put in Dr. Seuss, put Nick next to it. None of this rhymes anymore. And you can uh, start sending me the money. If I remember right, Dr. Seuss is actually written in German. And the translators, in, in every any language that you read Dr. Seuss in, it rhymes. And translators painstakingly, painstakingly uh, worked on getting the rhyming and the animal names appropriate. They, since they're made-up animals, they could change the names of them. To fit the rhyming patterns? Yeah, just decide. I Dr. would Seuss. love to hear the German version. <laughs> yeah, I know. Of Oh the Places You Will Go. <laughs> I'm sure that is that is very uplifting, even in German. What are, you, what are you saying? The Germans are a loving and caring people? Oh, beautiful language. Beautiful language, the German language. You know what they call it? No, <laughs> Deutschland. The language of love. No. Is that, German, German's not a love language. Oh yeah, it is. It's one French, of the five love Spanish, languages. Spanish, Italian. Is it German? Yeah, no, it's one of the five love languages. Is it? I I read it in that book. There's touch, words touch, of affirmation, touch, affirmation, which is that's German. That's like you gotta say. That, that's I get it. That's what it is. If no you, wonder all our relationships fail. If you read fell. deeper into the book, he he just says words of affirmation. That's German. German. He means German. Just speak German to, right. to the ladies. Yeah, you speak to the ladies. They just, they swoon they is what swoon. he says. They uses the word swoon. Oh, okay. Because they go over the moon. There you go. There's my other Dr. Seuss for the day. But seriously, okay, Princess we Bride. are talking about Princess Bride what? today. A great movie. A movie that, well, Eric, this is one that you chose. You, I gave you, you I gave, said, what is a movie that you loved in the 80s? And you came up, out of all the movies you could have chose, you chose Princess Bride. And why is that? Not a bad choice, though, by the way. I've always loved Princess Bride. It's kind of the movie that, in my childhood, I I loved. I wanted to be uh, the dread pirate Roberts. I wanted to be Andre the Giant. I didn't. So uh, I I chose that because I love it. I just... and I wanted to know more about it. Every time we do a podcast on any subject, I learn a lot about a subject, even if it's something I already know something about. We start talking, researching John, and then eventually, you know what? Things start coming. I'm like, I need to know these things. I don't want us just to learn. I hope the viewer also, or listener, the also listener. learns. It's an educast. It is an educast. Yeah, educast. We are an educast. Comedy cast, kind of comedy cast. Wait, there's no comedy in here. There is no com. This is all real. This is this real is talk. All real, real this, is. There's no comedy. There in is life. real talk about real things of, about real people. Really, from from real people, I should say. All right. Well, speaking of real, real people, talk about real things from real people. Okay, on the Princess Bride. What is your most fond memory? You like Princess Bride, Andre the Giant. Okay, I, exactly. Well, let's. I mean, one of the most quoted lines, and and I even find myself quoting it every once in a while. The or some, I I change it up a little bit. The the Inigo Montoya line, I am a I am Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepared to die. Yes. You know that that fa- that's a famous line that people. Well, Mandy Perkins. Uh, oh, sorry, Patikin. Pat. Pat. Mandy Pat- Pat- Patikins. Patikins. Sorry, man, Perkins. Patikins. Mandy Patikins is the actor that played that. He said... No offense to Mr. Patikins. Uh, we, uh, we butchered your name. We are butchering your name. When he read the script, he loved 
uh, Montoya so much that he felt very connected to him because he himself lost his father. His dad died at the age of 53 from pancreatic cancer in 1972. So he had a, a, a kind of an understanding that where uh, the black man that killed, uh, you know, his actual father was cancer. And so he kind of, he said in, in there's a, there's a, a movie uh, or more of a documentary about the film made by uh, the lead actor uh, what's his name let me i'm going to make a specification here uh-huh he didn't say the black man he said the man in black the man in black <laughs> yeah I make sure, I make come sure, on the man in black i want to make sure black. that we are making <laughs> this distinction here why what do you I, I don't understand why you're you're clarifying this well, can you explain to I, me well i'm just trying to help you buddy i'm i, I don't understand I don't, mean to, I don't see color i know you don't you you just see everything in Hazy grays, I respect that about you, but yeah, I just want to hazy grays. Is all I, I want to make sure that those listeners out there don't get oh, they don't. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Get, maybe get a little offended or offended. I don't. I literally don't understand why they would. I don't know. I'll think about it. I might. I, I might have to re you know, pull this back. <laughs> the the, the I, man in black. By the way, I want to point out Mandy Patikin. Patikin, that guy. He, I do, I did not recognize him. He has recently been on. I looked him up. He has recently been on Criminal Minds. I like Criminal Minds. I don't really watch Super Dark. It makes me depressed. Well, it is. But do you remember the guy with the kind of the guy with the beard? He's he's one of the investigators. Um, I'll look him up and I'll show him too. It yet. also has a uh, the that seventies TV show kid in it. Is he in that one? Um, Wilbur Valderrama isn't he on there now too? No, no, that's in CIS. Oh, that's in CIS. Okay. I used to watch all those shows. Then I, oh man, Criminal this Minds. This guy on Criminal Minds, he's that guy. I don't know who that is. You know, I don't watch Criminal Minds. I did not recognize him. He's uh, obviously he looks completely different. But anyway, you were saying, Mister, I don't know, Patikin and his black uh, friend, his black friend, <laughs> his dad, <laughs> his dad killed his dad. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a connection to the part, and he used that in his acting. I think. Because he was a wonderful um, actor, and that was a great part that he portrayed. Oh man, he he was just chewing up the scenery in in that do you, in that character. Do you know him and um, Andre the Giant? No, the why do you keep going Andre the Giant? <laughs> Wesley, I'm trying to remember the actor. Carrie, because Andre the Giant was amazing, sir. How so, dare you? <laughs> so when uh, Wesley and Inigo Montoya, yes, uh, did their duels, they did all their own duels. They studied for uh, six months, I think, to learn how to sword fight to do those duels. And the director researched for six to eight months on what moves and how how the sword fight would play out. Okay. So that's why that sword fight is done very well. It is. I mean, it was very it, well. Re- it doesn't look fake. Or, no. It doesn't look. And then obviously them doing it outside that backflip that he does off the rock. No, that was that, real. No, that's not real. That was real. I mean, it was a real person doing it, but he didn't do that. No, that was that was Mr. What was that guy's name that played that role? Carrie. Uh, Carrie L. L. West. Uh huh. Which, by the way, he's been in a lot of other things that I really enjoyed his performances. He was in Psych. He played a character we, that would show up every once in a while. Oh, okay. That was that was very funny and very well. well yes, done. I know you're talking about in Psych. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. He was he was a really funny character in sight. Yeah, he would just he would pop up every yeah. every season or so. Yeah, I kind of got burned out on Psych. It, yeah, it got very it, repetitive. It I re- ran a little long, I'll admit. Yeah, but but I didn't his finish it. but his his episodes were very funny. Yes, no, he says that, that except for that one back back flip in the air, uh, the every stunt they did was they did it. That's pretty. That's pretty that is neat. impressive. That's that choreography and that in that scene is really good. Yeah, and it, it says they, they intentionally made it one of the last to be shot. I can understand that. Because, I mean, it, it is it would be a long scene to do. Well, the, in between shooting, they would, you know, resetting scenes and, you know, whatever, resetting. Uh, they would they would practice the, the their sword teacher. They'd almost have to. They, they would both left. Their sensei. Their sensei. Would, they would practice not only right-handed, but left-handed also. Remember, they switched their hands. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they start all... Right-handed, and they go. Well, I'm actually left-handed, and they both go left-handed then. Yes. And he goes, and so they they had to practice all that. That is, I'm I'm jealous. 
I wish I got paid to learn how to sword fight. Yeah. So uh, a project coming up for for our Patreon listeners is I'm going to. Uh, we have a Patreon. Yeah, we we're going to. We are okay. Uh, and so you're Eric is going to do a backflip off of a rock. Right. And by the rock, I mean Dwayne Johnson. But he's gonna, <laughs> we are going to find Dwayne Johnson on the street. Eric's going to run up, run up to him. him. Backflip off of him. The plan is for me to distract him and go, hey, Dwayne. And Eric he will He won't just, even notice. It'll be like. It'll I'll be, run up and just backflip. It'll be like one of those circus midgets <laughs> that just comes and jumps off of him. But go ahead. What are our Patreon listeners? You, so project. I'm going to dedicate six months of my life. Find me a teacher of swordsmanship. Uh, primarily, I'm looking for an attractive lady to teach me. I feel like I, le- I would learn better from that. Mm-hmm. That's just personal preference of mine. And learn how to sword fight. I can... for, for, for our listeners. Well, buddy, I, I appreciate you making that, that it's a sacrifice. sacrifice. Sacrifice my time and their money. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, as soon as we get a Patreon, we'll put that... Oh, you don't get one by default. Wait a now? second. Wait a second. Is is this going? Which tier is this? Which What's if your, you what? give, if you give so much, you know what people? If you give, if you give here's here's what it's ten dollars a month. I will poke you with my sword. For twenty dollars, Eric will fight you. I will impale you with my sword. He will sword with fight you saber. in the street. He will sword fight you <laughs> anywhere you want. He will come to your house and he will sword fight you, left handed. Because Eric's not afraid of you, listeners. He is not afraid. He will fight you anywhere that you want to meet him. But anyway, back to our talk about Princess Bride. Now that Eric has declared war on everybody for the sake of money. I I respect that. (laughs) Now, a few things that I, I researched on this. This book was originally written in 1973. Yes, by? By, do you know the name of this guy? Uh, Goodman? Good. Goodwin, good, good, Goodman, Goodman, good, John Goodman. Goldman. That's Goldman. that's right, John Goodman. John wrote, Goodman. Why do it always come back to John Goodman? That's I, the second time today John Goodman's come up in my life. Really? Yeah. Uh, like, Goldman. Did you just happen to see him walking down the street? William Goldman. Yeah, we're we're old friends. Okay. So what? Well, yeah, William Goldman wrote this. Now William Goldman actually, I didn't realize he had quite a few things to his name before he wrote this. I didn't. I did not know he actually wrote a, one of his first things that he actually did is he wrote the screenplay, an original screenplay, for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, which became, of course, the movie that was a huge commercial hit. Yeah. And at the time, he it was bought for four hundred thousand dollars, and I remember reading about this, but I didn't realize he was the one that did it. I do remember that it was it was one of the at the time, one of the highest, you know, payouts for a script in Hollywood at that time. Yes. So I mean, I've, I, I of course love that movie. It's a great movie, and I didn't realize that he had done that. So I found this. I, you know, I was kind of going through some of his, his, you know, bibliography here. Other things that he wrote. That's what a bibliography is. Okay. I learned that fancy word in school. Okay. But. I was going through that, and he has quite a few things. He wrote Marathon Man, which is a, a another famous, another famous book I don't know it. that became a movie. What are these the hooks you keep speaking of? Well, they're they're these things that prop up tables. Oh, okay. And they make great doorstops. Okay, this is why they're all different sizes and thicknesses. They can get you go get them at a livery, li, li, livery, Liberary. yeah, a livery. Yeah, that's it. I've heard of I've heard of liveries. You, I hear you use your vision sockets. Yes, to, you use your to, vision <laughs> sockets to 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 read them, and yeah, you, uh, you read out loud through your noise cavern. Yes, see you you're picking up the lingo. I get it. I'm a doctor. <laughs> this is this is this is all medical terms we're using. So yeah, he he was he's a well known writer and screen writer, and. Also very famous for writing, if you've ever seen All the President's Men, for writing the line that comes from, that's often attributed to Deep Throat, which I guess he really didn't say, uh-huh. but he wrote the line, follow the money. 
Oh. Which gets gets redone a, a, redone a whole lot and parodied. He and, must have got it. The Simpsons did that. Well, he yeah. Must, the, he must have got it from Simpsons the Simpsons. did it first. Simpsons obviously. did it first. But, I mean, I didn't realize he had, he had written that and kind of come up with it on his own. But, yeah, this guy was very talented. Now, when he wrote this book... Uh-huh. He he was having trouble from what I from what I read. He was having trouble writing that writing the story. Okay. He was he was originally going to write a novel, so he started off writing just a story about or just the first chapter about what's her name Buttercup, Buttercup? and it was twenty pages long. Well, he, who did he write it for? Well, he wrote it for his daughters. Wrote it for his daughters. You one, told me you told me this part. One daughter wanted him to write about a, a princess, and the other daughter wanted him to write about a bride. And so he wrote about the Princess Bride. Right. It was dedicated to his daughters. Well, he uh, he was having problems writing this this little uh, story. Yeah. And so because it was becoming too long and kind of short in other parts, he was he decided to write an abridged novel. Oh. And so he made up this this author. That he uh, he that was named. Let me make sure I get this right. I wanna I wanna make sure S. Morgenstern was <laughs> okay. His name <laughs> he his name is Goldman. Yes. And now he's got a Morgenstern. This guy's double Jewish. Yes. He he's he, going for it. He is all out. I mean, Jew. he is just he's going for it. I, he's I respect Jew it. to the limit. But he checked. He made up this fake character. This fake author, and he he said that this Princess Bride was an abridged story from this this guy's writings. Okay, <laughs> why? Well, because why? Just, What's the point? Well, no point. Just to be funny, kind of uh, kind of thing. Because the the whole thing was supposed you know was comedy. Now he did write another story under this under this abridged S. Morgenstein. Yeah, what was that? He wrote a, buddy. Don't ask me. Don't ask me that. I I forgot. Well, I didn't I know it was the gondoliers. It was something the gond. I think it's just the silent gondoliers. That's what it is. Well, speaking of an abridged story, uh, you know, uh, Miracle Max and his wife Valerie, they're the um, the sorceress mm-hmm. and the, the the Miracle Man, right? They're who bring Bill, Billy Crystal and that one lady that was yeah, fam- in a lot of uh, things in the eighties. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Crystal, uh, Carol Kane. Yes. Uh, sh- yeah. So, they they got together before they went and shot, I believe, and came up with the elaborate backstory of their marriage that nobody that it's, it's nowhere to be found. They just they came up with it on their own, and it apparently is a very long and elaborate backstory for, over their characters, so they knew. What to play off of, and Billy Crystal, all those like which lo- lines he does, none of them are written; they're all off the cuff. Probably the greatest scene, yes, in the movie. Well, because they met one of the greatest scenes, and they had this backstory; they had so much to play off. And Billy Crystal, they said he was so funny, and uh, so much of it they, they couldn't actually put in the movie because it was not family friendly. That uh, who was it? The director was it Rob Reiner. Yes. I was at him. Uh, got a bruised rib trying not to laugh. Huh. He bru- like trying not to laugh at the lines, I guess, so it wouldn't sh- be heard on film. Right. Uh, so I think it was that, that's who got the bruised rib. I'd have to reread all the stuff I read. However, but yeah. Uh, yeah. He, he got, he, whoever it was, he said, he said that he was so funny. That he just kept never said the same joke twice. Well, I mean they they did a great job with that scene. There's a lot of great scenes in this movie, but let's. I, I just want to point out something very quickly. I I read kind of a shortened synopsis of of what the book was. Oh no, it was Patekin who bruised his rib trying to stifle his laughter. Oh, gotcha. Oh, got that Italian to laugh. Yes, well, I, I, I'm guessing that Billy Crystal probably was very funny. Still, yeah, still is. Still is. Still is. I'm just saying I, in that moment. But I, I read like a shortened version of this of the book. Okay. The movie follows it very, very well. Oh, really? Which, I mean, give it up to to Reiner for coming up with this. Yeah. But it, 
the book does not include the part of obviously where the grandfather is reading the story, reading the story to Fred Savage. Uh, yeah, you know, to Peter Falk, great, great actor. Yeah. Fred Savage, he was an actor. He was an actor. In the, I, he's not that kid, bad of an actor. Kid actor in the eighties, but it follows it, it. It was all Rob Reiner came up with this great idea for this grandfather to read this story. Yeah, to to the grandchild. Uh-huh. It, and of course, that doesn't happen in the book. But from everything that I read, it follows the book. Every scene from the the actual story follows the book perfectly. Yeah, it, it's it. very, very well done. Makes me not want to read the book, though. <laughs> like, well, it's so similar. I will say this: you don't have to. It's all there. It's all there, huh? I, I mean, it's 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 so similar. Normally, normally you look at these kind of things. And you go back to the book, and you'll see like major differences, but they they didn't do that with this. By the way, very very kind of funny thing that he added because he did like a fifteenth anniversary. This uh, gold, not gold Stern or Morgan Stern, but Goldman. Goldman. He yeah. did a fifteen and twenty five year uh, kind of. He wrote an extra deal to it. Oh, really? Yeah, and he 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 well, in a like a a foreword or whatever. Okay. And he he said that he was originally going to do an abridged version of Buttercup's Baby, which would have been a sequel. Oh, wow! But the publishing company, as a joke, he said the publishing company wanted Stephen King to do it, so he decided, it, so it never got done. As a joke. Yeah, I mean, because uh, Stephen King was doing everything back then. Oh, he, really? Yeah, I mean he. They had him, you know, writing forwards and everything like that for every book out. So. Oh, okay. But, I mean, so, I mean, he, he, the way he wrote this was very funny, it seems like. it. He he came up with, like you said, he, he basically got the idea from his daughters. And, I mean, it's just, it's kind of neat because you read his other bibliography, it's all very serious stuff. And then he oh, wrote, really? he wrote this one. A cult like, classic. More, I mean, a oh, great yeah. movie. That's... Well, he says he says in a, in a quote here that he gets more fan mail and more things for Princess Bride than any of his other works. He said for some reason Princess Bride just really talked to people. You know, it, it would come on on the weekend every so often growing up. And it was one of those movies that no matter how many times I watched it, I sat down and watched it. If I see it on, I'll sit and watch it. I've walked by screens playing at Walmart, and I'll stand and watch it. It's so quotable. It's so funny. So well written. So well acted and directed. It, it's just so eye catching. You can't help but want to just stop and watch it, absorb it, remember all the previous times you watched it as you watch it again. Thinking of the funny things that your friends or you have done, quoting it, or you know that that is what nostalgia is, and it is epitomized uh, nostalgia for me at least. I love watching that that movie. It's that's what why it, it's why it's the first probably the first thing that came to my mind. When we're like, I don't want to talk about. My mind just goes, let's talk about the Princess Bride, and you're like, what movie? I go, the Princess Bride. I'm like, all right, and we have to, that's all. It took. What movie? You didn't even finish your sentence. Well, no, I mean it didn't. It didn't even have to come all the way out because you you already had something in mind. Apparently, I don't know why. Jeff. I just said what movie, and you go Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Me, yeah. I would have. I mean, you're right. All these movies, they give you, you know, you quote them. They give you nostalgia. Yeah. You got those feeling. those sorts of things. Me, you know, I'm nostalgia for me as a kid watching Rambo. Really? Yeah, just murdering folk. <laughs> Mur- it had the highest that's kill, why, kill that's count why for a long I, time. That's why I have a a high tolerance for just wanting to kill people. A high tolerance, like no, I, I don't know really, that. Means. I really want to do I, it I all the time. Means. What's Make, a high tolerance for like murder? <laughs> murder? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't understand. No. I Speaking mean, of murder, there was a murder on set. Vizzini. You know him, Vizzini, Yes, Vizzini? the Sicilian, the the guy that sat there. Wallace Shawn. Inconceivable. Inconceivable. You know who was supposed to play him originally? Who? Danny DeVito. Big man Danny DeVito. Uh, Wallace Shawn, who who played brilliantly, uh, 
Vizzini, the Sicilian, uh -huh. was terrified on set that at any moment he would be fired. Uh, and they would get Danny DeVito. So anytime he messed up, he was just, <laughs> they say that he was nerve wracked on this set constantly, just nervous the entire filming because he thought he was going to get canned I, for I, Danny DeVito. And you can if, almost see that. What if, what if that was like a threat in your life is like, you know what, Eric, if you mess up at work today, we're firing you and we're getting Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. It's always Danny, Danny yeah. DeVito. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter what's going on. Like Eric, you perform well on this podcast, or I'm getting Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. Your kids are like, I wish my dad was Danny DeveVito. Yeah. Like every day, you're like, why? What is with Danny what DeVito? What is with Danny DeVito? Like, well, there's why? who you know. We had Andre the Giant uh, played. Uh, he played the. Uh, uh, what was the name of the character? Oh gosh, what was that character's name? He played the big, the big guy. Yeah. Fezzik. Uh, Fezzik, yeah. Who was supposed to play Fezzik? Who was one of the... You told me this. Arnold. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The Terminator was supposed to be... Which, let me ask you this. So from what you read, did they even approach Arnold with it? Did he Did I he say yes? It might have, see, the movie was attempted to be made many times before uh, Rob Reiner got it. until Because uh, Goldman sold the rights to it. And it got passed around, but... Uh, various problems, production companies closing. Eventually, he bought the rights back. He knew, uh, Goldman knows Rob Reiner's father. In fact, uh, Goldman gave Rob Reiner's father his book and uh, uh, Mr. Reiner's father gave it to him. Gave His father gave it to him and he read it in his 20s. Rob Reiner read the book in his 20s and loved it. And so there's a family connection there. So that's where I'm assuming Rob Reiner... Uh, built up a lot of goodwill with Spinal Tap and what was the other Fox movie he... Scroll down. You missed it. You you passed uh, pass it. it. Yeah, right there. Spinal Tap and The Sure the Thing. The Sure Thing, which I'm not familiar with The Sure Thing. I've heard of it, never watched it. That They gave him a, a free pass for a project and I guess he hooked up with uh, Goldman and got it got it made. Well, I mean, it was... And it was a good choice. But think about... So... I often like to read about these other casting choices. Yeah, I was trying to think if there's another one for this one outside of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. Well, so, okay. Just think about that that trio. So, instead of... For Fezzik, instead of Andre the Giant... Yeah, Ar you, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Which, by the way, I read up there that... That Reiner had a hard time understanding Andre. Yeah, during his test reads, he couldn't understand him at all. He says, he's perfect. He's a giant. He's right. perfect. What we want. So what he did is he taped uh, himself reading all the lines and, and gave that to Andre the Giant. And he, has, he, has, he learned how to read it by listening. But do you think that, do you think that honestly, think of 19, what is this? 19 what year? 83? What year was this made? Uh, 87. 87. Think of 1987... Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do you think he would have been much better? He wouldn't have been any man. What? What? It's not. He's not. You know, it's not in cruel. What's that about the barbarian? Um, Conan. Conan. I could. He has a few lines in that. Not many. Right. But he's super hard to understand in that movie. So we had. Okay. So it would have been him. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm trying to think of this this trio. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. And then who do we get to play Inigo Montoya at the time? I don't know if there's Dust, a... Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. Do you, can you do a Dustin Hoffman impression? Oh no, I can I can be playing as a no. A, no, I, I I'd have to do almost like Rain Man. Like I, I couldn't do that. That's not like, a voice I can do. <laughs> I got. I have to hear it a lot before I can get that one going. Like the uh, wow. where he goes. You know what was that? The definitely, definitely. Uh, 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 you killed. You killed my father. Yeah, you definitely killed my father. Killed six, my father. six fingered man. Yeah. Six fingered man. <laughs> you know the, the black, the black man. The black, <laughs> six fingered black man. <laughs> so, I mean, this would have been a weird. <laughs> I don't know about those other two. I would love to see the casting list for these other parts. Who would have? Who would have they fit in there for? Like, who would have been Miracle Max? Like, oh I'm trying man! To, I'm trying to think like. With Arnold, John Goodman. With Arnold Schwarzenegger in John Goodman. <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger in there, you're talking 
you're talking people that I mean, it almost would have been an action movie, because that's what Arnold was doing at the time. Uh, did he have any comedy movies at the time? By the way, Goldman, <laughs> Goldman was also involved in Twins. Speaking of Schwarzenegger, comedy. was he really? Speaking of Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito. Yeah, he was. He was. I'm, I'm bringing in the Is whole were, six degrees. Are you of, serious? Yes, I'm serious. I'll show you. He was. He did a little bit of work for. Uh, for a while as a script doctor and he did some work uncredited but he did some work on Twins and oh, a that's... bunch of others movies oh, wow that is a year later that came out in 80... 88 that was oh shot in man yeah so I mean this guy had his hands all in the career of Arnold Schwarzenegger but I mean no, by I'm... then you could understand Arnold Schwarzenegger by then you could understand him this was pre... Twins was pretty much the princess bride that never was. <laughs> That's, you know what? Now I can look at Princess Bride and go, this is the backstory of those of those three guys. Oh, okay. Or just of the two guys. Later on, they would they would meet. Uh, what's gonna, this you, fella? You're gonna watch this fella. You're gonna pull your shoulder out, sh- stretching so far. Oh, buddy, I'm telling you right now, it. This is the I all of a sudden understand twins a whole lot better. It's the backstory it links it all together huh? of Fezzik and Vizzini or Vizzini's character or whatever. Yeah, I mean this is this is so much clearer now. So in eighty seven, Predator came out. So it would have been a great year for Schwarzenegger to have Predator, and then Princess Bride. That would have been a pretty good. That's true. A pretty good duo. The question is, how do you follow? Follow Predator with what is it? A few the next year you've got twins. The twins, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, I always you always hear the rumors that they were going to make that sequel to Twins. Yeah, yeah, they go like a couple years ago with Eddie Murphy. Is that who's supposed the, to be in it? The triplets. Are you serious? Yes. Oh man, that would have been horribly awesome. That would have been horrible. Horrible. Hor- yeah, it would have been horrible. I would have loved it. Let's, let, let's take off the word awesome. Let's just call it horrible. <laughs> we're, we're talking Norbit level of horrible here. Uh, Norbit was bad. It was bad. I, I only watched it. I don't think I finished it. I think I watched 10, 15 minutes of it and I couldn't handle it. So, I mean, this, this though, was a, you know, an iconic movie. It was, it was Very one. Much so. It was one that made, you know, honestly made a name for a lot of, a lot of people. Because honestly, beyond Princess Bride and beyond showing up in a few episodes of uh, Psych and some other shows, like just on television shows. Oh, you're talking about Carrie Ellis? Yeah, I don't know what else Carrie Ellis Ellis. uh, Ellis Ellis. did. Uh, Well, I forgot. Saw. I forgot he was. He was the doctor in Saw. He was Robin Hood Men in Tights, which was a. He was in Liar Liar. I don't remember him being in Liar Liar. I don't either. Oh, I think he was. I think he was the other lawyer, if I remember correctly. Oh, okay. I mean, he's been in other things, but nothing as big as, which it would be hard to, but nothing as big as Princess Bride. Princess Bride really kind of made the career for a lot of these people. Oh, he's a voice on uh, Family Guy too. Well, he's been a voice on a lot of things. I, I've heard, yeah, I've heard his voice on Family Guy. But I mean, this this was a, a an iconic movie. Is there anything else about this movie that you can? that you remember i mean i i remember different scenes i mean you have the you have i mean just starting from the beginning you have the you know the famous fight between like you said him and anigo montoya yes and in black and anigo montoya dread pirate roberts they think he is you have the 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 throwing of the rock yeah and he chokes him out when he chokes him out and of course the famous Sitting there and having the the poison the poison deal, where they're you know I, I forget the name of the poison. It's I can't either. I don't remember it either. It's Iocul Iocusin or something. I, like yeah, that. Iocane. Iocane. Iocane powder. But they but you know the the old famous lines were like I know that you know that I know that you know. Yeah. You know that whole <laughs> that's so funny. It is, and then then he has him look over there and he switches them. Well, yeah, I know. Then it's the then it's the, into the 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 woods, right? And there's the lightning quicksand. Yes, and the, the giant the, mice, the giant mice, the rats, and then the fire. Right, the fire. 
uh, in fact, who was it? They had, I think it was Goldman on, on the set. Uh, he was super nervous and he wrote the scene where her dress catches on fire. Did he, did he think that, that he was going to be replaced by Danny DeVito? <laughs> he did. He thought they're going to get Danny DeVito to rewrite this. I am very nervous. <laughs> Danny DeVito. What I picture is like Danny DeVito is just at the fence. He's like, I'm like ready. Staring guys. in. They're like, <laughs> Anytime somebody's messing up, they just point to the it's fence like, and there's Danny. You're like, up, DeVito. Are you calling me? <laughs> yeah. Am I supposed to come in? <laughs> so uh, even so, when when the Princess Bride, uh, what was her name? Uh, Buttercup. Buttercup. Her dress catches on. He wrote the scene as the filming was going on. It happens. Her dress catches on fire. He panics and yells, "Oh my God! Her dress is on fire!" That is stop shooting because. And you're like, you wrote it. This is your right. You wrote all yeah. this. Like, and I didn't know you guys were actually going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So he he was he was very scared of being on on set. Very nervous. He he thought it was going to be boring because he knows what's going to happen. He's just sitting there, probably waiting for rewrites the most. And uh, they say you could hear this weird, un, barely audible chanting. And it was him praying that everything would go well while he was there. Right. So he was more of a nuisance on set. But he was invited by, I think he was invited by uh, uh, Rob Reiner. Right. Uh, invited well, him on set during the filming. Sounds like they had a friendship from what you Yeah, what you they mentioned. clearly were, were more than just a writer and a director right. of friendship. They, they you know, family friends. Right. It, it very much seemed like. And so... And so you okay, so they get out, you know, they're out of there. Then they they have the light. You remember he goes and gets tortured by the life sucking machine. Oh yeah, yeah. There's the the big thing it has the big suction cups on. Yeah, him. yeah, something <laughs> like that. And then and then of course you you have them go in and take him, and then they take you have the big famous scene with Miracle Max. Miracle Max, Valerie. He's only mostly dead. He's only yeah, he's oh, only... only mostly dead. <laughs> That's a good line. Oh, it's great. <laughs> That's so funny. He's only great missing. line. Oh, and of course, you have the ending where, you know, they make the, uh, they make the big distraction where Andre the Giant's the, the, his outfit catches yeah. on fire, which I always thought was a hilarious scene. Well, speaking of the, the you remember the back in the forest, he jumps in the quicksand. Yeah, he jumps head first. That wasn't written into the scene. Uh, uh, Elvis talked him into doing that. There was sure. a trap door underneath the sand that had a giveaway at the exact time. Oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't real quicksand? Yeah. Oh. And so if it didn't, he would have knocked himself out or broken his neck. And speaking of being knocked out, uh, the six-fingered six fingered man. Um, if you tell me he got knocked out, I'm going to be very happy because that man deserved it. He was a jerk. <laughs> no, when uh, Christopher Guest, who played Rugen, uh was supposed to knock El, uh, Wesley out. Yeah. In that scene, that they could tell that he was holding back, and it was, it was coming through in the filming, and so Elvis says, "Hit me, hit me, hit him hard enough." Actually, knocked him out. He woke up in the hospital. He woke. Elvis woke up in the hospital. Well, yeah. And that's the scene that you actually see in the movie. That's but the that it's that six finger. Is the that, six finger just it gives it that. Mm. That extra, oh. it's, it's exponential. Every it finger, every extra finger you get, you exponentially get stronger and punchy. Right. Yes. Right. It's science, guys. This is a side cast. Yeah. This is we are educast, science educast, cast. Yeah. Movie cast. Movie cast. Retro casting. Retro cast. Comic cast. Comic cast. Which is the new <laughs> word I came up with just now. I like for it. Comedy casting. So he got knocked out. On top of that, uh, I think it was Elvis. Get with me. Uh, Elvis filmed uh, many of people. the scenes. We'll, we'll talk about how you can <laughs> with a broken toe, because Andre the Giant convinced him to go riding on an all-terrain vehicle. Andre the Giant was so big, none of the cars could take him to the set. Uh, probably in the, on the wherever they were filming at from the hotel, so they had an all-terrain vehicle that would take him back and forth. He convinced Elvis. Andre convinced Elvis to go take it out for a joyride, and uh, <laughs> he immediately. Uh, flips it over or it hits oh, a rocky wow. path and, and, his, and his foot got stuck between well, the mechanisms and broke his big toe. You know, not what? his small toe, his big toe. They needed to make Andre the Giant like a Pope mobile, something that has a, like a big bubble, a big bubble for him. If you know, it'd be great. It's like it has lots of suspension, but as it gets in, it would have lowered. Oh, like yeah, a lot. It would have been 
He, he any vehicle he he was in was the original like gangster vehicle. Like it it had no shocks and just went down the road sparking, I'm sure. Well, he I mean, Andre the Giant said, he, it's unbelievable how big this guy is or was. I mean, he's he's not as big now as he used to be. Wow, that's a that's he, a weird. Three bottles of cognac and twelve bottles of wine reportedly made him just a little tipsy. A little tipsy, yeah. I thought I brought that up as we were talking about his size. Uh, according to Robert Wright, he would order four appetizers and five entrees and would drink forty ounces uh, a forty ounce beer pitcher filled not with beer with liquors. A concoction he called the the American. American. There. There is no greater name you can give something than just. What? Well, well, where is the, where was I'm, Andre I'm calling this from? the American. Where was he from? Where, 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 I don't what's know. His nationality. I don't know. Raise but let me let Jimmy. me talk about a few more a, a, a scene that I really really enjoyed. Oh, he's French. That's right. He's French. Uh, let me talk about a scene I really enjoyed. The wedding scene. Which is a marriage. Marriage. Oh, yeah. Marriage. We come together today. You performed You performed weddings. Did anyone ever ask you to perform it in the, no. the style of Princess Bride? No, I, I may have been willing to do that. Marriage. Marriage. We come together today for marriage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that... There were this movie had a lot of great scenes, and even the scenes with, you know, if you when you mention this movie, you have to mention Peter Falk, Columbo. I, I grew up watching Columbo with my dad. Yeah, you've talked about that. Great, great uh, actor in my opinion. He was in some other stuff that he was really good in too. But I always remember he always him. had that eye. Yeah, one of his eyes is fake or it's just really lazy. I think it's just really lazy. Okay, but. It, what was his? What was his? Well, his he was role? The, he was the granddad, and there were some funny little asides between him and him and Fred Savage there, where Fred Savage would interrupt the story and yes, he'd be like, well, "Can I continue?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder how long that that those scenes took. Now that that had been just like a day of shooting. Well, yeah. Well, the Billy Crystal scene, it they said it took three days, and each day it was ten hours long to do all the Billy Crystal scenes. Well, I'm guessing a lot of that had to be the makeup. He was in a him and uh, Miss About, Kane, yeah, were in a ton of makeup. Yes, I mean, it's very well done makeup, but it was it was makeup nonetheless. And I'm guessing probably took quite a while. Yes, and they say he learned a lot of jokes, sixteen hundred jokes or fourteen hundred jokes, and that that's what he kept he kept going. He kept saying jokes out of the fourteen. 15 and 14 centuries. I gotta ask, where did he learn 1400 I, jokes? I don't know. For, not the number 1400. Well, no, I mean, just the jokes from the 1400s. I don't know. That's kind of what it alludes to. He had, he, I guess, studied a little bit. And uh, is, there, is there some book out there I don't know about that's jokes from the 1400s? Hey, man, you know that comedians. Oh, from the 13th century period, yeah. So, uh, Billy Improv, 13th century period jokes. Oh, he, never, he, he improvised. improvised. But the, he had to understand the culture and the the time well, period yeah, to do that. I was I was really hoping that there was a 13th century comedy book out there that I did not know about. There might be. You know, you know how they used to make those those list those book of jokes that as mm-hmm. a kid we could buy. You know, yeah, you'd buy them. Still and, buy them. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sure they still can. Well, now you know what my kids now do. Well, my kids now. My kids now, you know what they do to get jokes? On the internet. Hey Alexa, tell me a joke. Constantly. Hey oh, Alexa, yeah. tell me a joke. Oh yeah. Well, I heard some people doing some laffy taffy ones the other day. I was like, I had forgotten all about those. Oh, the ones on the paper. They are still terrible. Yeah, they are. So, but I really enjoyed this movie. It was one that I, I thought was good. I thought was funny at the time. It's great. Does anybody want a peanut? Was another fun line. You remember oh, yeah, that? the big yeah, yeah. Well, well, no, it's when they're on the ship and everybody's saying stuff and they're all rhyming. Oh, and then he's like, "No more rhyming." And he's like, "Anybody want a peanut?" <laughs> Just one last rhyme. And so it was. It was. I mean, there was. I don't remember that. I, was, I need to go back and rewatch rewatch it. There was a lot of funny scenes in this movie. It, it's back to back. It is. It's just, 
and it's it's a very it's a it's kind of a I don't remember how long it was, but it was kind of a short movie. It wasn't a super long movie. You know, ninety eight minutes. Oh, it is a short movie. It was made on a budget of sixteen million, made thirty point nine million. Oh wow, that's really it has a it has a ninety seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That's really sixty two fresh and two rotten. Apparently, two people who don't have any taste at all. It's got a seventy seven on Metacritic and an eight point one over at IMDb. An eight, a seventy seven on Metacritic, man, they are hard over there. Metacritic is like the Russian judge of the. Oh <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> They do. They do not like movies. At Metacritic, they they do not like anything apparently. But this, I mean, I enjoyed this movie. It wasn't one of my favorites back then, but it was it was still a good movie, a very funny movie, and and one that even today I think would hold up. I haven't watched it in a while, but I think. It, what do you think? You have kids. If you showed this to your kids today, what do you think they would think of it? I mean, your youngest one's probably too young for it. No, he's not it would, really. It would, it would go over his head, I would think. It would go. He would enjoy the scenes. Like I think he would get scared in the forest. Uh, I think he would like the fighting scenes because he's. I'm this. You know, this weekend I'm going to watch it with the kids. If I can't, if I don't have it, nothing comes up. I'll find out where to get it. You heard it here, people. Eric watches. Eric, Eric is watching Princess Bride. <laughs> I will watch Princess Bride. Eric watches for for an edition of Eric watches, and then he will post. Uh huh. You will post a a vlog telling of your experience of watching Princess Bride and how it holds up. I mean, I, I probably have seen it within the year. This is how I, Eric, I probably watch it every nine months. This is how Eric. Length. This is how Eric watches works. You watch something and then you vlog about it. I've watched so much. I don't, I'm watching Bob. I'm watching the last half of the season of Bob's Burgers because uh, Hulu has on Hulu, and I didn't notice it. And now I'm watching it. That's that's funny too. I like okay. Bob's Burgers. Okay. All right, but this it's time to wrap up. I've had a great time talking about one of my favorite movies of the '80s, and one of my favorite movies overall, The Princess Bride. That was a good movie. Great, like I said, great movie. It, I keep saying it wrong. Not, n- not probably one of my g- favorite movies, but it was up there. It okay. was up there. I mean, it was a very, very funny movie. It was. I would even go as far to say, a great movie. <laughs> how? What would you? Well, how? What is your rating on it? Out of ten of whatever you give it. Out of my John Wicks, out of ten John Wicks. Oh, out of ten John Wicks. Oh, you don't give John Wicks. Only I do. Uh, I give it nine. You give it nine John Wicks out of ten. Yeah. That's a that's a high. You know what? That's a high wickening. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. John Wicks are good, but I don't feel like they fit. Ranking the Princess Bride with John Wicks, so I give it ten Princess Wait Brides. Wait a minute, is there a is there a comedy movie that Keanu Reeves is in that we can Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Okay, how many Bill and Ted's do you give this? Oh man, that's good. I like that. I like that a lot. Like a nine point five Bill and Ted's. Nine point five Bill and Ted's. Okay. <laughs> All my rating systems have got to be off Keanu Reeves. Yeah, no, movies. It's, it's. I like that. It's. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. We change the system here. Everything's based off Keanu Reeves movies for you. Maybe Nick Cage movies for me. <laughs> I like it. So how many? Um, what's a Nick Cage? Cage. What's the one where he's bees? Bees. No, that? no. That that was <laughs> that was not a comedy. Even though it was terrible. How many, how many Ghost Riders does it get? That's not a comedy either, <laughs> man. Ah, what's a Nick Cage comedy? You know what? We got. A, oh, the Crudes. How many Crudes? Uh, Crudes. Let's find a better one. Okay. I There's got to be a there. Nick Cage has done a lot of stuff. There's got to be a movie that was his. You know, What's his I'm, pinnacle comedy? Well, what I don't know. What's a pinnacle comedy for him? Half his career, whatever that one is that he has. Okay. What are these headshots? I don't know. I like the one with the headband. Uh, uh, what is that comb over? Keep keep strolling down, buddy. We're just going to have to go down. And, oh, I was looking. Oh, he's a, he, we, got, he got, we got the kick ass movie. National uh, Treasure is almost a comedy. Ah, come on, man. We can do better. Uh, There's got to. I mean, you got to go back. Way far to find. We, yeah, well, we're we're hitting that way. Let's see. Here. I don't want voicing. I want his actual. No, no, something something that was a a straight up. Comedy. Face off is pretty. Face off is pretty pretty awesome. Uh, Con Air's uh, Con Air's actually a good movie. I like Con Air. Con Air was a good movie. The Rock, outside of that weird sex scene on the roof, it's a good movie. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. What else we got? We're going down. Vampires. Moonstruck. No, that's more of a drama. 
Let's see here. Well, we're, we're kind of out of <laughs> uh, Fast Highs and Richmond High. Buddy, I'm going to be honest with you. I watched maybe so many minutes of that. Firebirds. What is Firebirds? It sounds super familiar. Okay, we're oh, it's the helicopter movie. I love this movie when I was a kid. You know what? Okay, so out of out of That's... ten firebirds, <laughs> firebirds is good. It's not. We a need bad to wrap movie. this up, and I I don't see a comedy on there. Okay, pick one that would be okay. You know what? The Rock was kind of a comedy. Out of ten, The Rocks, <laughs> Nicolas Cage rocks. Trapped in Paradise. That's a comedy right there. Oh, it was a, that was a terrible movie. But, okay, I will do this. Drafted, out of ten, trapped in Paris. I forgot this movie existed, and now I'm sad because I remembered. <laughs> but I am going out of ten, trapped in paradises. Okay, I am gonna go with a nine out of ten, trapped in paradise. <laughs> I don't even know how to read that rating. I am sad. It sounds like you hate the movie. Well, like a ten out of, a ten trapped in paradise for Princess Bride sounds like you hate the movie. It does. <laughs> there's there's really nowhere to go but down from <laughs> trapped. I mean, the sad thing is that trapped in par- out of ten trapped in paradises, <laughs> trapped in paradise gets like a one. <laughs> so, so it, it gets a hundred. It gets a one out of itself. <laughs> I don't one out of ten of itself. I don't know how the math works. It just does. It's that crazy new negative, math they're teaching the kids. Exponential but negative. Yes. All right. Oh, the ant bully. That was a. I mean, that's a voice. That's a voice. All right. Let, let's wrap that. You know this what? Up. This was. This Thank you fun. for listening to this podcast. We enjoyed it, Eric. Princess Bride. Would you suggest it to people? I I have and do. Suggest would it to you people. still suggest it to people? Of course, I Even have. After talk, I suggest it to anyone. Who would you suggest it. a podcast about the Princess Bride to people? Yeah, well, I. Yeah, well, it was it. Is it ours? It's ours. I uh, yeah, I guess. Here's a question: <laughs> What would you give the Princess Bride out of ten? Pull up a chair. No, <laughs> <laughs> please don't. Please don't do that. You're like sadly one. But sad. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed it. We've enjoyed wa- doing it. We've enjoyed talking about Princess Bride. We enjoy doing this every week, and we hope that you enjoy listening to us. If you do enjoy listening to us, please give us a like and subscribe. They can go to YouTube, like and subscribe there. We're also found on iTunes, pretty much every... Google uh, Play, SoundCloud. Right. Stitcher. Stitcher, yes. Uh, Angel Fire. Angel, yeah. What's, what's the Instant other? Messenger. <laughs> AOL Instant Messenger. Right. Well, that's, that's still around, though. Yeah, was it? Okay, I, I didn't know so. that. Uh, what was that one that was kind of under... Never mind. We'll get to that GeoCities. Go GeoCities. To our, go to our GeoCities website. Yes. You know, you and we do have a website that's going up. What is our website, Eric? It is puppodcast.website. And we did that just because... Why, why not? Why not? <laughs> it's different. It's different. P-U-C podcast.website. Yeah. And we'll be adding more stuff up there. Eric is putting something up there about Metrovania t- st- style games. I'll be putting something up there about my childhood playing Castlevania and all the things I remember, nostalgic things that I remember, which, I mean, people want to listen to what Nick has to say. Little Nicky. Little Nicky remembers. In his footy pajamas. In my footy pajamas and my, my your, pajamas and that your, had the big butt flap in the and, back. And your big bowl of cereal. Hung out, hung out a lot in my, my butt. Still have that thing today. It doesn't quite fit as well. I don't well, really think you should wear it. Uh, but it, it, I'm just glad you have a shirt on. It is actually <laughs> on right now because I can't get it off. <laughs> I, it's been... It's been 10 years like this. <laughs> Call a doctor. It's like fused into your like, skin. I can't feel anything around <laughs> here. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed it. Please tune in next week. And Eric, any final thoughts? No, I'll keep listening. Like, subscribe. Apparently we're supposed to have a Patreon eventually. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a Patreon. To fund my fencing Well, lessons. yes. Your fencing lessons to, <laughs> to fight the whole world, apparently. To fight the whole world. So, all right. Thank you for listening. And we hope you'll do it again. All right, bye.